what's happening everyone? So just like I did for you guys last month, which I'll be doing going forward, is I'm gonna share with you guys the top fragrances that I wore the most in the previous month. So, you know, in February, I talked to you guys about the fragrances that I wore the most in January. Now it's mid-March, I'm gonna share with you guys the top fragrances I wore the most in February. These were like my favorite fragrances, favorite discoveries, if you will. And then at the end of the year, like every year, I'll give you guys the top discoveries I made for the whole year. So without any further ado, guys, stick around. These fragrances coming up next are surprisingly amazing. Welcome back to another video, I'm Max Forte. Let's not waste any time. Let me talk about the first fragrance here, which is one of my favorite discoveries this year so far. One that I wore a lot in February. As you guys know, I'm in New York, New England, Connecticut area. It's very cold here. The winters here are below zero when it comes to Celsius. Fahrenheit sometimes even below zero as well. Lots of snow, lots of cold weather. I need something to warm me up. And this particular fragrance blew my mind. It was released in 2018. It's a fragrance that no one really talks about, guys. This is going to be Amber Gold from Calvin Klein, the Euphoria Collection. I did a first impression for you guys a few weeks ago, almost a month ago. This stuff here is absolutely fire, guys. It smells incredible, it starts off fruity a little bit smoky, a little bit incensey. There's definitely oud here. There's a note of honey, which I do love in my fragrances. The more I smell this, fra this note in fragrances, the more I become enamored with it. All in all, this is a niche-like fragrance. It's, it smells like a very expensive niche fragrance. If this was bottled by Tom Ford Private Blend, this juice could easily fetch two to 300 bucks, and you guys would gladly pay for it because it smells absolutely insane. It starts off really resinous, really spicy, a little bit smoky. As the fragrance dries down, it gets better and better. As it warms up with your body, it just becomes this incredible, resinous, spicy, and smoky type of a composition. Incredible, tons of amber, tons of spices, lots of resins. Uh, amazing, guys. Try it if you can. One of the fragrances that was very hard to find here in the US, I think it was made exclusive to the Middle Eastern market. I don't find this here very easily in America. It is available now, of course. I'll have all these fragrances listed for you. If you do want to procure a bottle, you can. So Amber Gold Euphoria for Man, definitely one of my favorites from Calvin Klein and definitely one of the, my favorite top rotation fragrances that I've been wearing the most. This next one is probably the most complimented fragrance this year so far that I wore. And this is saying a lot. This fragrance is one that's getting a ton of hype and limelight here on, on YouTube. Many people talking about it. It's a great cheapie. And this fragrance here is going to be Halloween Men X. Now, this particular fragrance is going to be very youthful, very um, juvenile, if you will. It's going to have this very sweet kind of accord. Reminds me of fragrances like Versace Eros. So you must have a sweet tooth. You must like these kind of... Uh, you know, more playful type of fragrances to understand and enjoy this fragrance. But one thing is for sure, it's going to be very pleasing, very mass appealing. One of those fragrances that are going to fetch compliments. Women uh, or guys or anybody that smells you will definitely say, hey man, you smell amazing. What are you wearing today? Because it's got this really nice, mass appealing, sweet and creamy, ambery, tonka, you know, kind of a vibe. The easiest way to describe this, if you like Ultramal from Jean-Paul Gaultier, and if you like Versace Arrows, you know, you put them together, this is what you get. Needless to say, heavy tonka, heavy vanilla, and heavy ambroxan. If you're familiar with those notes, this is not gonna be anything, you know, that hasn't been done before, but it's very well constructed here, and it smells amazing, and it's long lasting as well. So, and it's a cheapie. So it's got a lot of good things. It checks off a lot of boxes. So, hence the fact a lot of people are talking about this one. Be wearing a lot, and they can attest to the fact that it is a great pickup. If you don't have these type of fragrances in your collection, definitely consider checking this one out. Now, I'm gonna go niche on you guys. I'm gonna turn up the volume a little bit. This is going to be a fragrance that is both green and floral, which normally I don't gravitate toward floral fragrances, but it has a really spicy undertone, which makes this very interesting and very intriguing. This fragrance from the house of Nishani, and it is called Ege. Now, this is a fragrance that was released at the tail end of last year, but I didn't pick it up until January of this year, but haven't really tried it until February. I think February was when I really tried to wear this fragrance the most. We had some warmer days in February, even though it's very cold here in February. We had some spring-like days, which I really wore this fragrance a lot, especially when I was indoors because I was like, man, I can't wait for the springtime. This fragrance has a lot of notes that are reminiscent of springtime, so I'm gonna wear this a lot. 
so that I can experience this fragrance and perhaps it'll even make my top spring fragrances. Now, this opens up very minty, spicy, and floral and extremely green. I have to tell you, even though the bottle is not green, I would have actually made this bottle green because it has this really, really peculiar green kind of a vibe to it. It's almost algae-like. It's got this, you know, creamy, floral, sea-like algae vibe, but it's rather green uh, as opposed to a blue scent, as opposed to like a marine vibe. I guess you could say there's a little bit of a marine vibe to it, but it's mostly a green vibe that I get here that's floral, it's minty, and what makes things very interesting here is that it has this very peculiar note of anise and licorice at the base. So I think you must really enjoy licorice and anise, to be honest with you, to be able to enjoy this, because when you combine it with the ambergris and the green notes, it makes for a very exquisite, exotic, and unique scent. I think uh, this is gonna smell nothing like anything you've ever tried, which is something that's really good for this. It's really, you know, going for this. I specifically love this fragrance from the heart into the dry down, even though I appreciate the mint up top. I really love the turns that the fragrance made on my, on my body with my body chemistry with that green nuance that is also very spicy. There's also a very huge note of cardamom here in the heart. You have some herbal components, olibanum, and licorice at the base. What this fragrance reminds me of is if you took Bulgari Aqua uh, Pour Homme and you mixed it with Mephisto from Serjoff and added some royal water components along with that mint and the cardamom, this is what you would get. Needless to say, a great fragrance for spring and summer. Uh, it didn't make my top niche, you know, fragrances for spring, as you guys saw that video. That video is up right now. I'll pop it up here if you haven't. But this fragrance here very well might make my top niche summer of 2021, guys. So stay tuned for this fragrance. And if you haven't checked it out, definitely check out Nishani Ash. As you guys know, Nishani is great quality, and this one here is no different. Now this next one here is a fragrance that has really blown my mind. It's a fragrance that I haven't really talked much about it. I got this fragrance late last year, around Christmas time, and I've been wearing it on and off. But I'm mostly wearing this for black tie event or dresser occasions that I've been, you know, going over the past few months. And this fragrance is a fragrance that hasn't really been talked about or reviewed much here on YouTube. There's only a handful of people that talk about this fragrance. It's kind of like a hidden gem from a niche company. It's not cheap, but it's worth every penny in my opinion because of what it brings to the table. I'm talking about from the House of Siage. This one here is calling the Contemporary or the Contemporary Man or from the Gentleman's Collection. This stuff here has a very old school vibe to the fragrance from like those woody spicy fragrances of old with a great modern touch. Uh, I can't tell you exactly what this reminds me of from, from a fragrance that I probably had in the 90s at some point, but it has a very powerhouse kind of a vibe to the fragrance. There's no oak moss or lavender or anything like that listed here, except for leather. It's a very strong spicy leather. But what I love about this fragrance is that the dried fruits along with the plum note up top gives me this really resinous, woody and fruity vibe that is just so particular to this fragrance. And it's one of those scents that really give me a lot of positive notices. Every time people come in contact with me that I've been wearing this fragrance, they'll be asking me, what are you wearing today? You smell so good. Or they'll walk into the office or I'll be walking, you know, along with them or they'll come in contact with me. Maybe they'll shake my hand. They'll say immediately, wow, what are you wearing today? This is so powerful and so strong that even if they're wearing a mask, they'll tell me, wow, something smells really good in here. Is it you? So I'm telling you guys, the contemporary from the House of Siage brings something to the table that's really unique and particular to this fragrance. Like I said, the blast of cardamom, the sweet plum, fruity nuance, the dried fruits, the leather, just incredible. This is like an oriental, woody, spicy type of a scent. Very masculine, almost a little bit rugged, but has this really nice, refined and, and sophisticated quality about it, along with the old world kind of nuances to the scent. Really exquisite stuff, guys. Check it out if you can. Get a decan. Definitely worth checking out. As always, when I share with you guys my top videos, for the most part, I like to do like a countdown kind of style to leave the best for last. This particular one is a fragrance that doesn't really... I have never seen anything really, um, you know, I haven't really seen any talks about this fragrance in the communities or many people talk about this at all, maybe a couple reviews on YouTube. This is a true hidden gem, guys. 
from a fragrance house that's a designer, so you're not gonna expect to pay too much money, but this is absolutely fire, absolutely quality here, guys. Definitely unisex, a guy or a gal can pull this off beautifully. And when I reveal to you guys what this fragrance is all about, what this fragrance reminds me of, it's gonna blow your mind. The fragrance I'm talking about from Christian Siriano is going to Christian Siriano right here at the top of the cap. Uh, the sprayers are actually pretty good on this one. And this is a fragrance that I've been actually wearing a lot for evening wear. If I'm going out to friends' house, if I'm going out with my wife, this is something that I'm always picking up and just grabbing and going because it's really giving me a great feedback. Now, this particular fragrance is called Midnight Silhouette or Silhouette Midnight from Christian Siriano. The bottle looks pretty cool. It's got this sparkly kind of, uh, you know, cement kind of a look. It's really unique, uh, sparkle uh, kind of a vibe. You have the information here at the bottom. Again, really unique bottle. These silhouettes kind of like remind you of a dress, like a women's dress. But the quality of this juice, the long lasting power of this juice and what it reminds me of is absolutely incredible. Now the nose structure here might really surprise you. We're talking about sea salt up top with bitter orange. We're talking about freesia flower and we're also talking about immortelle. Now immortelle is a flower note that I absolutely love over the past few years. It's definitely one of my favorite floral notes because it gives the fragrance a hay-like or like a blonde tobacco kind of a vibe, like a burnt sugar kind of a vibe. And that's what you get with this fragrance, which is absolutely incredible. The base here comes with pralines, beautiful vetiver, white musk, which really makes this very sensual. Now here's the wow factor for you. This fragrance reminds me of a combination of the three fragrances. If you actually fused all three fragrances, this is what you would get. And the combination of fragrances I'm talking about is Baccarat Rouge 540, our money code, Eau de Parfum, meets Angel Man from Thierry Muglet. You put all these fragrances together, that's what we get, ladies and gentlemen. That is the fragrance, Midnight Silhouette by Christian Siriano. Needless to say, incredible juice right here. Compliment pulling fragrance, long lasting, powerful projection. One of those scents that you wear for night out, dress your occasions, or simply one of those times where you really want to be noticed. You really want to project, you want to walk into a room and really make a statement. That's how I would describe this fragrance. This is a statement making fragrance, guys. Unbelievable, great, glad to share it with you guys. Again, all five fragrances were the fragrances I wore the most in February of 2021. Of course, stay tuned for my April video where I'll highlight the top March fragrances that I wore. As we get warmer now, you're gonna perhaps see more of a warmer citrus uh, aromatic type of fragrances, you know, as we get closer to summertime. But, you know, I'm in New England, I still get some colder days, hence the fact that I'm wearing, you know, stuff like this or even stuff like the, this one that I just described for you with the elements that I talked about. Because when it's cold out, when it's still a little bit chilly out, these make it warm, make it more, you know, seductive, more sensual. That's the kind of stuff that I'm looking to wear when the weather is still nice and cool out. So let me know in the comments, guys, what fragrances you guys wore the most in the month of February. What are you wearing the most right now? Is there anything you guys want to point out in my direction that I should check out? Please sound off in the comments. That's all I have for you guys today on these fragrances that I wore the most in February. Again, stay tuned for the April video. If you guys appreciate the content, don't forget to leave your support, guys. Touch that like button for me, subscribe for a lot more, or turn on your notification bell icon so you get videos like these at all times. As always, guys, thanks so much for your support. Thanks for hanging out with me. Remember, choose your fragrance wisely, and of course, wear it well, make it your own. I'll see you guys right back here with another video very soon. Take care.